Hello, and welcome to Paint Along Studios TV. Today we'll be painting Sunset Creek. So grab your favorite painting music and let's get started. We're going to need some supplies, some paper towels, water for cleaning brushes, styrofoam plates, and of course some liquid acrylics. We'll be using white, some phthalo red or pink, phthalo blue, Mars black, and some deep yellow. We'll also be using some brushes, a number 10 filbert brush, a number two fan brush, a number six round brush, a number zero script brush. Let's start with the number 10 filbert brush. We're going to need one big scoop of white and two scoops of deep yellow. You can make more of this color if you need to, just follow the recipe and repeat it, but most likely this is all you'll need as long as you're very good at scooping and spreading. So we have our color all mixed in. We want to divide the canvas in half, so all the way down the middle. Then we want to come about two inches above them, kind of using my brush to measure that black metal part of the brush is about two inches. I'm going to fill in everything below the halfway point, so not the line on top, but the line that comes halfway through the canvas. Any direction is fine. I'm just using it back and forth just so I kind of stay below the line. When it's all the same color, you don't really have to worry about the direction of the brush. You do want to make sure that it's nice and even though. Once you have it, go ahead and fill it in to that next line. We want this area to stay nice and wet so we're doing it last. All right, let's mix our next color. We want a scoop of yellow, a scoop of our pink, and a little bit of white. We want to mix it together and make ourselves an orange. So if you need to adjust that color, you can, but you want to get an orange. I'm putting it right here. I'm making sure some of it's touching the yellow and some of it's coming above into the canvas above. I want to go all the way across with it. I'm going to add a little extra along the top. And then I'm going to take a paper towel and I'm going to squeeze some of this paint out. I'm going to use my brush as a tool. I'm not really going to add any extra paint, but I want to get both of those wet colors to blend. Go back and forth, back and forth until they blend. If it's very wet, five times as good. If it's starting to dry, ten times as good. Okay, leave some of that orange in your brush. Come back over here and mix a scoop of pink and a scoop of white and smush the bristles down into the paint so some of the color gets mixed in. You can also go back and grab some of the orange and mix it in there as well. We want kind of a sherberty pink and we want to add it above our orange just like so, just a nice big line of it. And then we want to repeat the blending process, wiping out some of the paint and then very gently letting both colors touch the bristles, the pink and the orange mixing slightly. All right, let's make a new color now. Go ahead and grab some pink. Again, we're not cleaning our brush, some white, and a little tiny dab of blue. Mix it in there and get yourself a purple, kind of a pinkish purple, more violety. Come along the top. I'm trying to make a rather thin line. I don't want it to take over too much of the pink, so just a little bit, but I do want it to blend a little bit. If you just have a little bit of paint, you don't have to wipe some out, but usually I just wipe some out just to be careful. And then I want it to blend just slightly where the pink and the purple touch. I'm just very careful. I don't want the purple to take over too much of the pink, so I'm going very carefully, making sure to wipe my brush every once in a while so that those two colors blend without losing too much of the pink. All right, let's clean our brush. We want to pound it up and down in the glass. This is a stiff bristle brush, so it won't be bothered. It doesn't matter too much if it, we could pound it up and down. We do want to squeeze out the water though. It can hold on to a lot of that water. It's a tough brush, but it doesn't like to let go of paint and it doesn't like to let go of water. Let's go ahead and switch. We're going to leave that one on the table. We want to switch. We want to grab some of that orange with our number six round brush. We're going to start creating some zigzag lines in our water area. So I'm doing back and forth lines. Some can be long, some can be short. I'm refilling my brush every once in a while, but I'm not pushing too hard. I'm keeping everything in the yellow zone, leaving a little bit of room from the orange. Okay, so leave some of that yellow untouched. Okay, so we have some of these lines. You can also add back some yellow. If you feel like you had too many orange lines or you want them to look a little softer, a little less strong, you can add back some of the yellow and kind of blend it out 
into that orange area. So you can essentially erase or lighten some of them. Now we want to make sure most of our lines are tapered on the edges, meaning that they're a little bit thinner. We don't want them huge and chunky. I'll show you an example of that. So I'm going to add back a few extra orange lines. Okay, so I'm going to make a nice big fat one. See this one? It's fat on one end, a little bit thinner on the other. This is how you get it thin on both ends. Pull your brush away from the canvas as you get towards the end of the line. See that? It got a little bit tapered, a little bit thinner. It just looks a little more watery, a little more natural when it's a little bit tapered on the ends. Let's stir that brush around. Don't pound this one. It gets stirred around. Leave it in the water. We want to grab our big white handle brush, our number 10 brush again. I'm going to switch plates just so I have a clean spot to work on. I'm going to get a scoop of white. Remember, this is the clean brush. We cleaned it earlier. And a scoop of phthalo blue and mix them together. Okay, now we're going to fill in all, this, all the white space that is left up here at the top. I'm trying not to touch the purple too much. You can even leave a little tiny white line if you want. And just very quickly, we're just going to grab a tiny little bit of pink on the end of our brush and mix it with a small part of our pile. Make sure this purple is a little bit more on the blue side, a little bit more of a plum purple. And just very gently, I don't have too much paint in my brush, just very gently let it touch the blue and the purple area. So it gets a little bit fuzzy and a little bit blended right there. And again, we're going to clean our brush. We're going to switch back to the red brush, so I'm going to leave that big one in the water. I'm wiping out the water so that my paint does not drip. I'm going to grab some of the blue. I want to add some blue lines down here so that it looks a little bit watery. It's also reflecting some of the colors that are going on up in the sky. Again, we're kind of flicking our brush away from the canvas so we can get those nice tapered edges. I like to create kind of little stairs, meaning I'm going to make a little row like do 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 do. These are all coming down maybe at an angle, but they're all kind of stacked on top of each other. I don't like to just spread out a bunch of them. I like them to be in clusters. They look a little more natural that way. A little neater, so little clusters. Again, we're going to leave some space. I'm not going to get all the way to the top of the orange. I'm kind of going a little bit lower, so there's some orange lines all by themselves right there. A little here, a little there. Mostly in clusters, but you can have some random ones by themselves. Stick that brush in the water and stir it around a little bit and leave it there. Switch to the little tiny blue brush. We're going to go ahead and create a little glow. We have some white. I want to put it about right here where the orange and the yellow touch, a circle. And then I'm rubbing it with my finger in a circle the same way that I put the paint down. You can do this several times depending on how light you want it to be. I like it to look faded because I'm going to put a nice big glowing sun in the middle of that. But I do want it to be kind of even, so I'm just adding a couple more times and rubbing with my finger. Then I'm going to add a nice solid center. Okay, this is going to be my little sun. So I'm not going to rub this. Oops, I dropped a little bit on the canvas. Let's wipe that off. So I'm going to put a little sun right in the middle and leave it rather solid. I'm not going to rub it or anything. I'm going to kind of fill it in. I want it to stay within the glow. So I don't want it any bigger. I want it to stay inside of it. You can kind of determine how big you would like it to be. But get it nice and round. Always start smaller than what you want it to be so you can get it nice and round. Let's create a glow underneath the sun now. We're starting kind of where the orange starts, and we're just making very, very thin lines right below. We can also come a little off to the side if we want, just a few little random ones, but make the majority of them right underneath the sun. So a little off to the side, but most of them underneath our sun. Just little back and forth lines that kind of stop when they reach the blue. Stick that brush in the water. It's clean the same way the red one is. Stir it around, and then you leave it there. We're going to go ahead and hair blow dry our canvas. We want to make sure everything's dry. Then we want to get some blue tape. Okay. We're going to put our blue tape here on the canvas. I want to make sure it's on the white, so no white should be above this blue tape or no orange. I'm going to get it as evenly as I can and then push down with my fingers and secure it on the sides. Okay. We're going to be painting above this. We have our red handle brush, our number six, and we're going to grab some Mars Black. No need to mix it with anything. We're going to go ahead and paint back and forth, okay? Do not paint up and down. Do not shove the paint towards the, the uh, tape because it will sneak underneath. You want to go back and forth so that the paint goes on top, of, on top of both the tape and the canvas. OK, 
tape, then I'm going to go ahead, again, I'm working above the tape, I want to go ahead and make some little mountains in the background. I'm keeping them very, very low because I want them to look like they're very far away. Don't make them too high. I'm just kind of wiggling my brush a little bit here and there. What you don't want to happen is you don't want everything to look like one continuous wavy line. You want it to look uneven and more organic, meaning some areas are a little higher, some areas are a little bumpier, some are more smooth. Still keep it all very low, but try to have some inconsistencies in it. Don't become a robot and just go wiggle, 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 wiggle all evenly all the way across. Have some inconsistencies. Let's clean this brush, stir it around, leave it in the water. We're going to take the tape off. You need to hang on to the canvas as you pull it off. And see that? You have a, a nice straight line along the bottom, along our horizon line. We're going to dry off our brush and we're going to start making our trees. We have our little number zero script brush. We want to make some lines. We're using all black now, so the rest of the painting will be done in black. I'm going to make some lines in the painting. These are going to be where my trees are going to go. Okay. Now they'll end up in different heights in the painting and different areas in the water, okay? Some of them will end up in the, the orange, the pink, the purple, and the blue. And some of them will get close to the island and some of them will get down further. So pay attention to where they end up in the water and where they end up in the sky. If you want um, two trees to be right next to each other, make sure they're in the same spot in the water, meaning they both end up in the same spot at the bottom. They can be different heights, but if you want them to be friends, be next to each other, that's what you do. Make sure the bottom parts kind of match up. So I like to make a little bit lower tree, kind of where the sun is going to go, and everything else is kind of higher, lower, higher, lower, so that it's not a pattern. Don't make it a pattern. I'm going to start making the trunks of the trees now. These are cypress trees, so we're going to see some of the wood work, so some of our roots, but we can also um, have a flat bottom. Because we could just say, oh, the water rose a little bit and we don't see as many of those roots. So I can make it flat on the bottom too. But we do want it to get wider towards the bottom. For most of them, though, I am going to be adding the little roots. This one I'm probably going to do half. So I'm going to have some little roots on this side, some little lines that kind of pull away. And then a little bit of a straight edge at the other side. Like half of the roots are showing. Okay, it almost looks like a little broom, so we start on the actual tree trunk and then we pull away slightly and to the left or to the right. I'm also going back and I'm thickening the trunks of the tree, especially if it looks way too broom-like. Like if it really, really looks like a broom, you want to get rid of that sort of broom-like look and you want to thicken the trunk of the tree about halfway up. Okay, so see that? That looked kind of like a broom. Let's fix that. Let's come up the side of the tree just a little bit, about halfway up, or it could be a little higher, a little lower, but I'm just evening it out a little bit so it just gets a little bit thicker as it goes down, so not as abruptly. So it's not like super, super thin and then super thick at the bottom. Make it an even transition. So just picking and choosing. They can have the flat bottom. They can all have the roots. It's up to you which one you kind of gravitate towards. I just like to do a little bit of each. I'm kind of starting on the actual trunk of the tree as I do this. And I just pull away slightly and I'm traveling up a little bit just to even out the trunks of the trees. Let's have an example of a thick line. I'm pushing down hard with my brush. I want to barely touch to make a thin line. I'm resting my pinky or my wrist on the canvas. This is an example of that, see? All right, now we want to do an example of what to do with our trees, okay? We don't want to randomly put the branches on the trees, okay? I'm just sticking some random lines everywhere. No, that doesn't look good. Let's not do that. What we want to do is we want to trace. So I'm tracing the trunk of the tree and then pulling away slightly, okay? So I'm tracing and then pulling away, pulling away, pulling away. Every time I start on the trunk of the tree or on the branch and then I pull slightly away, this makes a much more natural looking tree. It makes the branches look much more natural. I'm finding places to rest my pinky or my wrist so I can steady my hand. This allows, um, this allows me to make very, very thin branches because I'm not pushing down as hard with my brush. 
I'm putting all the pressure on my pinky or my wrist, wherever I'm stabilizing my hand. Everything is dry except for the black areas. If you really want to kind of rest it wherever you want, you can use the hair blow dryer to kind of dry all the black areas and then you can rest your pinky or your wrist wherever you want. You want to add quite a few branches on each tree. Okay, notice how I'm making some main branches about, you know, five or six main branches that come out of the trunk of the tree. And then on each of those branches, I'm allowing little tiny branches to grow out. Don't worry if the trees are really close together. They're going to naturally overlap. You're going to have some branches that overlap on top of each other. They're either in front or beside, but their branches can go on top of each other or beside each other. Don't do this. Don't allow the branch to be thick on the end. Pull your brush away from the canvas. Flick your brush away from the canvas so you have that nice tapered edge we were talking about earlier. Little tiny thin branches. You want a whole bunch of them. Notice how I'm letting the trees get a little bit taller. I'm allowing some of the branches to come up. Okay, so that main trunk of the tree, that's not where it ends. Add some extra branches that get thinner towards the top of it. Okay, it goes up and up and up, gets a little bit taller. Still allow your trees to be different heights, meaning you don't have to make them all come up to the blue. Some of them can stop in the pink or the purple. But don't let that stubby end of the trunk of the tree stay. You have to add some thinner branches coming out of it. So we're kind of we're trying to fill up the space with a bunch of branches. A lot of them will be covered up. Don't do this where we have a nice thick branch on a thin tree. Go back and thicken the trunk of the tree so they're either equal or the trunk of the tree is thicker. It looks much better. Okay, then go back, add a bunch of little branches everywhere. So we're trying to fill up the space. The more branches you have, the easier it is to figure out where you need to put leaves later. Okay, wherever we're going to put the leaves later. We're going to cover up quite a few of these branches. So don't worry if there's an ugly one. Just put more leaves there. If you don't like a particular one, you can put more leaves there. But we do want to kind of fill up this empty space. We don't want to completely cover everything up. We want to see some of the colors in the background showing through. But we do want to have lots of little branches everywhere. And all different heights, different sizes. Some have lots, some have, you know, a little bit less. Let's create um, some movement in the water with the reflection, okay? So we're not going to do a real reflection. We're going to do an abstract dome. We're going to go back and forth underneath each tree, okay? Some back and forth lines. And I'm putting pressure in areas. See, it's dark there where I put pressure, and I barely touched where it's lighter or I didn't even leave a line there. Have a little bit of each. Don't do a continuous pressure, meaning I'm pushing down hard every single time. Start going lighter or allow your brush to kind of run out of paint before you get all the way to the bottom. This is an abstract reflection, meaning it is not completely realistic. The water is moving, so it is distorting the reflection. But go ahead and work underneath each tree, kind of doing these back and forth lines. They don't have to be all connected. They don't have to zigzag like Z's going down. You actually want to put them closer together, either stacked on top of each other or just really, really close. Don't get too many zigzags going. It looks a little too abstract with the zigzags. Let's switch brushes. Clean this one in the water. We want to switch to our last brush, our fan brush. This is a fun one. Fill it up with black again. Don't get too much. You want to wipe some of it out. So either wipe it on a plate or wipe it on a paper towel. And we're going to start dabbing. We're kind of going bop, 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 bop. We're dabbing some leaves on. Okay, this is what I don't want you to do. Okay, this tree looks good. Let me show you an example of what I don't want you to do. I don't want you to come over here and cover up every little branch with just one. One for you, one for you, one for you, one for you, one for you. That is not a healthy looking tree. No, you wanna think like a woodpecker. You wanna hit one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Just kind of work around the areas that the tips of the branches are, okay? You do wanna cover each tip of the branch with uh, some of these dabbing, some of these leaves. But you don't have to stick specifically in one spot. You can move slightly higher. You can move slightly over. We're mostly using our brush the horizontal way as well. We're not tilting our brush too much. We're trying to keep our brush mostly horizontal. 
meaning it's making a little bit of a long mark as we do it. Okay, so we're coming on the trees. We're letting the trees again get a little bit taller because we want to cover up every single little bit of the branches. We're also coming in the middle, even if there's not a tip of a branch, as long as it's touching some part of the tree, we can add some leaves there. So don't just put it on the outer edges, put some in the middle as well. And there you have it, our beautiful Sunset Creek. Thanks for joining us at Paint Along Studios TV. We hope to see you again. Bye now.